Hello and welcome to my channel. In this channel, we explain various nursing concepts in a simple form for better and easy understanding. These videos could be used by both LPN and RN students as well as nurses who are trying to refresh their basic concepts. My name is Nas Mosh. So let's continue talking about our imbalances, our electrolyte imbalances. And in this video, we're going to talk about our calcium imbalances, magnesium, as well as phosphorus imbalances. So calcium. So our normal range for calcium is between 9.0 to 10.5 milligrams per deciliter. And let's talk about hypocalcemia. Hypocalcemia means it's below 9.0. And some of the causes include lactulose, uh, like diseases like celiac, lactulose, Crohn's disease as well as alcohol use disorder. We could also be caused by GI loss, inadequate intake, vitamin D deficiency, kidney failure, hypomagnesemia, as well as hypoparathyroidism. All right, because remember our parathyroid glands when we talked about our endocrine system, when they have our parathyroid issues, they could end up with calcium imbalances. So sensing symptoms of this, we could have the positive Trovaski or Chavaski sign. We could end up with some seizures, dysrhythmias, impaired clotting timing, paranthesia, titany cramps, as well as hyperreflexia. Our nursing care for a patient with hypocalcemia involves, we'll educate them, of course, about the dietary increment, we'll monitor for orthostatic hypertension, will implement seizure precautions, IV calcium replacement or dietary one, which is a daily calcium intake supplements they'll be given and also they'll be encouraged to take vitamin D therapy. So IV calcium must be administered slowly and the site should be always monitored for extraversion. It's always diluted with D5W, never with normal saline. That's something you need to remember. And calcium has an inverse relationship with phosphorus, meaning when calcium is high, phosphorus is low and vice versa. So hypercalcemia. Hypercalcemia means we have high levels of calcium above 10.5. Some causes of this could be lithium. Lithium is one of the medication that causes this imbalances as well as the DH toxicity, which is digoxin. We could have vitamin D excess, glucocorticoids, right? Our, our corticoid medication. It could be dehydration, prolonged immobilization, thiazide diuretic, malignant disease, as well as hyperparathyroidism, as well as hyperthyroidism. Okay, some signs and symptoms of this include kidney stones, because when you have that calcium, a lot of bulking, it will be, end up being like little crystals, right? Dysrhythmias, muscle weakness, lethargy or a coma, deep a bone pain, nausea and vomiting, hypertension, pathological fractures because calcium is not being well used, uh, flank pain, polydipsia, dehydration as well. And our nursing care for this patient and treatment will include the patient will have to have dialysis. We need to get this calcium out of the body. We'll have fluid administration. We'll give them isotonic um, IV fluids. We'll always have this patient on a cardiac monitoring. We'll increase mobility to bring those calcium back into the bone because it's out of in the bloodstream. We'll give them some medication, biophosphates, calcium clators, glucocorticosteroids, calcitonin, because when somebody has hypercalcemia, the antidote of hypercalcemia is calcitonin. Remember that. And always remember, calcium has an inverse relationship with phosphorus. So since we've been talking about an inverse relationship with phosphorus, let's go and talk about phosphorus. So phosphorus levels are normally between 3.0 and 4.5. And with hypophosphorus, Fatemia, low phosphorus levels, these some causes or risk factors that could lead to this, DKA, alkalosis, alcohol use disorder, vitamin D deficiency, refeeding after subvasion, like people who go to long kind of fasting, right? Long dry fasting, burns, TPN. Excessive loss of body fluids, of course, the through like diarrhea, vomiting, anti-acid use and hypokalemia. 
could lead to this and hypomagnesemia as well. So signs and symptoms include muscle weakness, bone pain and deformities, confusion, chest pain, and they would have involuntary eye movement in any direction and could cause the sight to be blurred vision. So a nursing treatments involve oral phosphate replacement, IV administration of phosphorus for severe causes, but we always have to be careful with anything we're replacing IV because it's straight to the blood. We gradually introduce the patient to solution for patient on TPN, right? We do a testing dose before we just give the patient the whole TPN. Patient will be on seizure precaution, will uh, infection prevention, as well as dietary management for education. And also, always remember, phosphorus has an inverse relationship with calcium. Hyperphosphatemia, that means high levels of potassium. And what could cause this? We could have chemotherapy, acidosis, excessive enema use, uh, high intake of phosphorus. We could have hypoparathyroidism, chemotherapy, acute pancreatitis, as well as renal failure, some Symptoms of this include positive Chavorsky's and Chavorsky's sign, tetany cramp, parenthesia, dysrhythmias, hyperflexia, anorexia, and nausea and vomiting. Remember when I say anorexia in this kind of scenarios, doesn't mean the people who starve themselves. Anorexia is actually defined as lack of appetite, as well as soft tissue classification. Our treatment for this kind of patient will give them IV normal saline, will place them on dialysis. They'll have a dietary management and education as well as we'll give them medications like aluminium hydroxide, some diuretics as well as vitamin D. Our last electrolyte imbalance that we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about our magnesium and our magnesium normal range is between 1.3 to 2.1 milli equivalents per liter. And some of the causes for hypomagnesemia include Amphoteric B, those are medication, right? Amphoteric B, diuretic, cycloporins, and other things include alcoholism, GI loss, TPN, laxative abuse, hypocalcemia, hypokalemia, DKA, hyperparathyroidism, M and acute MI. Signs and symptoms of this include positive Trovosky and Trovosky sign, dysrhythmias, parenthesia. Of course, the patient will be agitated. They will be confused. They'll have hypertension, hyperreflexia, dysphagia, lack of sleep, insomnia with irritability, and of course, anorexia with nausea and vomiting. Some nursing interventions or nursing care for this patient, since they are at risk for seizures, will place them on seizure precautions, and this is cause of those dysrhythmias, okay? And we'll monitor for swallowing, dysphagia, ABC, make sure the airway is always clear. We'll have dietary measures as well as education. We'll monitor their respiratory rate, right? Because of that dysphagia and as well as urine output. Remember, we need a patient to always have a minimum of 30 milliliters per hour for sufficient urine output. And some medication we'll give them will be IV magnesium sulfate or PO magnesium salts. And we also monitor patient for signs and symptoms of magnesium toxicity and treat with calcium gluconate. So if they end up with magnesium toxicity to reverse it, calcium gluconate is your antidote for hypermagnesemia. So hypermagnesemia could be caused with, with laxative overuse, lithium toxicity. This lithium drug causes a lot of problems. Renal failure, excessive magnesium therapy, adrenal insufficiency, and excess extensive soft tissue injury or necrosis. Some signs and symptoms of this could involve nausea and vomiting, a flushing phase, bruck, the patient could end up in a coma or a cardiac arrest. They'll have hypertension as well as drowsiness and hyporeflexia. Some nursing intervention with this patient will always have this patient on a mechanical ventilator because of the cardiac arrest or coma. We'll always give this patient IV fluids, lactate ringers, or normal saline. We need to expand that volume. We need to dilute it. We need to bring it out. We always also make sure the renal function is working, right? Because you need to flush it out. We monitor for our respirations and blood pressure. We monitor for deep tendon reflex as well as IV calcium gluconate and loop diuretics will be given because 
loop diuretics to flush that fluid that we are giving out and flush the magnesium out and as well as calcium gluconate reverses hypermagnesemia and magnesium should not be administered to clients with renal failure why they can't take it out they'll end up with toxicity and that's it with our electrolyte imbalances thank you for watching please like share and subscribe to my channel see you on the next one bye